Hey everyone, this is Professor Triplett, and we want to get a little bit deeper into Sketchfab each week. So this is a little update here. Uh, so I've got a cloth sim going on, but what I've done is to export. I haven't used you know this cloth sim won't come in unless you have like little bones on it and stuff. But so we won't worry about that. I've actually taken like a frame from the cloth sim, and I'm going to export this with my actual model. So basically, before I do that though, I want to show one thing. Some people will run into this problem where they won't see the FBX or the OBJ export options. If that happens, you need to come into Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, go down to almost the bottom and you'll see there's an FBX to Maya or FBX Maya. Make sure those are checked. And then in the middle, you'll see an OBJ export and make sure these are checked as well. Okay, so now you want to select all your geometry, go into File, Export selection. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. In this case, I did do an, an OBJ, and so I would save as an OBJ. I'm not going to do it right now because I've already done it. But that's you would just hit export selection, uh, and then you'd be good to go. Uh, one thing I should bring up is that export selection. If you do an FBX and you have this box checked, you it will export animation. So if you see a timeline that keeps playing in uh, in Sketchfab and you don't want that, just uncheck this and then export that. So you may you may see that. Okay, so we've already got that exported. I'm going to go into uh, Sketchfab. You can see right here I have it preloaded. And the reason why I preloaded it, I mean, I would show all the steps, but um, my internet's really slow and it takes a long time to lo upload the textures and stuff. So I'm just going to show you the steps that I took to get the textures uploaded in. So obviously we know this part. You upload and then you choose a file and whatnot. You could also, if you like, need to change this, you can go to More, Re-Upload. So you can just change it, say Re-Upload, choose a file, and then it will guide you to where you can choose that file. You could also delete it if you don't need it anymore. And that's you know that might be the case in some cases. So the other thing we want to do is save the view. So get this so it looks good in the viewport. So usually it's you know getting a decent one, two, three read. I can see this, I can see the top, I can kind of see here. So it looks nice and three-dimensional. And then I can hit save view. And so now that just basically saved the view. That's what it's going to look like. And from there, we want to go to 3D settings. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 3D settings. It's going to take a little bit and it's going to open up. Now you'll notice that probably a lot of your models, they're white when they come in and they're really, really, really bright. So basically, the first thing you want to do, well, let's see if there's anything here. Um, I don't really change much in here. Off initially I might come back later but these settings are pretty good for default so PBR is usually what I'm using so I go to lighting this is where I'm going to spend some time initially so I chose um, which scene I wanted to be in and you can go ahead and change that like for instance here's another this is a scene that's uh, you know near the ocean or the water so maybe this is a scene that you want actually I kind of like that it looks nice and clean so treasure island so when you get something like this, you might say, well, it's it's a little bit bright or I don't like the angle. Like I want it to look like be at that angle for the shadows or something. So the first thing you can do is change the orientation. And what that's doing is just spinning this texture around. The second thing you might want to do is just turn the brightness down a little bit if it's a little bit too blown out. If you're getting areas that are completely flat and white um, and there's no detail information, you may want to turn the brightness down a little bit. Light intensity kind of works along with that. Uh, so you can, you know, play with those two numbers um, shadow bias I wouldn't worry about that for for beginner stuff um, but if you're getting stuff where your shadows look really weird you can try uh, raising or lowering the shadow bias to get things to look better um, but but initially I don't play with that too much unless I have to okay so um, the next step is materials so we have this object and since I use an OBJ unfortunately the OBJ doesn't bring in the proper material names uh, it, it just brings in like these generic names so if I go ahead and click on something in my scene, like if I click on this, you'll see it kind of all highlights, turned yellow. Um, and then it clicked, or it, it chose blend one. So everything that I clicked on here is blend one. Uh, so that's that wood material. And I've already uploaded the maps, but I want to show how you would upload maps. So basically, um, you, know, you, can, you can make choices here. You can say, I want a color, and you can just go ahead and turn it a color. Like let's say it's just like toy plastic or something. Um, or you can go ahead and go texture. And for texture, uh, you need to go to choose texture if you already have textures. But if you don't have the texture, you have to go to manage textures. And then it's going to say import texture. So you can go ahead and go 
import texture and it's going to go to your computer and then you can upload it and then once it's uploaded you know you can close this dialog and go back to uh, this setting here and say choose texture it should be in this list so for this one I'm using this wood texture which we will be using later in the semester um, and uh, I'm also using if you look at the canvas here I'm using a um, where is it so this is blin 3 and I'm using this uh, kind of like this uh, canvas PNG it's very very subtle very very light okay the other thing I'm doing too is so I'll show you in the canvas is um, I play with the roughness um, like the canvas should be more rough so basically turn it up a little bit uh, if you want it like shiny looking you can turn it down watch this if I turn the metal all the way up you can see how it can look like it's metal okay so you should go in here and just play with these things see what they do um, roughness going higher is more rough metalness going higher is more metallic if it's black it means it's less metallic um, I don't have any maps in the specularity at the moment probably don't need it for this kind of material uh, and, you know unless I was really being persnickety about it um, but one thing I do have in here is in a bump normal map so I changed this to bump map and I have this just grayscale bump map uh, that I picked so this canvas bump and then you can change how bumpy it is so like you can turn this up and you can see like that kind of looks ridiculous and usually when it comes to the bump maps you want to kind of be a little subtle with it don't go too crazy um, you know on an occasion you need it more bumpy but usually it's pretty subtle uh, so something like that looks okay and let's see here there's all kinds of other maps you can put in here clear code ambient occlusion cavity opacity emissions emissions is cool because that's for like kind of if you want to light up something and make it look like it's glowy um, opacity if you need to be able to see through parts of the, the geometry like if I wanted to tear or rip inside of here I can put in an opacity map that matched up with my UVs but I'm getting ahead of myself this is the basics thing anyway so just want to show you that you can mess with those two things um, and uh, the other thing if you want to have some more fun let's see let me just make sure I didn't miss anything oh yeah let's do this let's set up these materials here so I have these metal materials so I don't have a map for those, but I can go in here and just turn the metalness up. Let's get closer so we can see these. So now it looks a little bit more metallic. And then if I turn the roughness down, it'll start kind of reflecting stuff around it. So that looks a little bit more metallic. And this one, uh, unfortunately, I missed. And that needs that should probably go in with the other stuff. Uh, in the Maya file, if I export it with the same material, then I wouldn't have to set this by hand. But I'll go ahead and just change it a little bit by hand and so now you can see this thing has sort of a you know it's got the metal look it's got a um, it's got a uh, a nice wood and oh the wood one there is something I want to show you about that I forgot okay so the wood one I have a normal map in here so if you have a normal map you have to turn this to normal map uh, in the normal map you can't really change you can go down from one as far as how much it affects it but you can't go up past one so if your normal maps not bumpy enough with ag so actually with this one this looks okay you can kind of see a little bit of bump there but it's not I think it could be even bumpier um, you have to do that in Photoshop because this thing's not gonna let you do it here or in whatever program you're making your normal map in so just FYI uh, that's getting ahead of this lesson but just wanted you to know you can you can make a normal map or a bump map